And then Abuna Anthony, Abuna Anthony told me to come and speak about difficult people. And I'm just wondering why do they choose this topic for you guys? Is there any reason for that? Uh, maybe because you guys are nice and you have to deal with difficult people, maybe. We'll give you the benefit of the doubt. But we'll talk about another group of the difficult people, which is manipulative people. Let's start in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. One God, Amen. Actually, I was happy to know that this is, you know, my turn to talk about manipulative people because it's my specialty to help people who are dealing with manipulative people. And when you hear manipulative people, you think it's going to be people who are far away or people that you don't know where they are, who they are, strange people people that you might want to meet one day at your work, but they might be closer than what you think, okay? And I see it a lot, especially in a Middle Eastern community, okay? So no one takes this against me, but I see this a lot, and I'm happy to talk about it. I'll give you some examples, three examples quickly about um, different characters from the Bible that were manipulating others. And manipulating people is basically controlling others, trying to control other people. Okay? So let's give some examples here. <clears throat> the first example... Hey, Joe. Let's, let's What's happening? Just making copies. That's great. That's great. Hey, I've got a question for you. i got to be heading out of the office a little early this afternoon. Uh, i got a golf outing i got to head to. I was just wondering if you could maybe look over these reports, just go ahead and get them done for me so I could go ahead and maybe get out a little early. I'm kind of busy today. Yeah, that'd be great, man. I appreciate it. You know what, man? <laughs> I'd watch it around the office if I was you because I hear... I hear the boss has it out for you. So I, that's what I hear. That's what I hear. And, and I just want to let you know, maybe you, should, maybe you should swing with me for a while, you know, so you can get the rub. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, all right. Great, great. Well, you know what, buddy? It's, uh, I, I love you. I love you. Right? Thanks, Joe. Really appreciate it. Okay. Sorry, I forgot about the video, so... That was good. Um, good example, that's what I meant. <laughs> good example. So some examples from the Bible. First is Jacob manipulating Esau, his brother. It wasn't a stranger who was manipulating. It was Jacob, the good guy, actually, the good brother, manipulating his older brother or his uh, twin brother, uh, Esau. Basically, Esau wants... Jacob was cooking some stew. Esau came and from open country. He was famished. He was very hungry. He said to Jacob, quick, let me have some of that red stew. I'm famished. Jacob replied first, sell me your birthright. He said, okay, you're hungry. I'll give you food, but sell me your birthright. And birthright is, is something huge. It's the blessing, is, the, is who's going to be the successor of the father, something big. And it's the blessing that you get from the father. And he said, give me this, and I will give you something to eat. He was so hungry. He's a man. So put these together. He sold his birthright to his brother you know, for a, a plate of stew. That's one example. The other example is women manipulated Herod. If you remember, Herod was a king. He loved a prophet called John the Baptist. And one day, his girlfriend, who is not 
uh, uh, legal relationship because he was married. Her daughter danced in the birthday. She danced a very, very nice dance. He was very, very happy. And he said, I'll give you anything up to half of my kingdom. So the girl asked her mom, what do I ask for? And she said, ask for the head of John the Baptist. Because John was not happy with the relationship. And he told him to break up this relationship. So the girl manipulated him and said, give me now the head of John the Baptist on a plate. The king loved him, even though he didn't listen to him. But he loved him. This is the worst news he could ever hear. But eventually... He gave and because of the promise and because of the people and he did that so she made him do something that he didn't want to do same as Jacob made Esau do something that he hated and he, he doesn't want to do okay that's manipulation last part which is common is Delilah manipulating Samson that's a third example if you have your outline write these names Delilah manipulating Samson. She was a spy, even though she's his wife. She's a spy from the Philistines, and she was asked to know the secret behind Samson's strength. So she kept asking him day after day, day after day, tell me, tell me, what is the secret behind your strength? Even though the secret be behind his strength was, it was something secretive between him and God. It was a blessing. It was something special between him and God. And here it says that, Then she said to him, How can you say I love you when you want to confide in me? With such nagging. Does this sound familiar? With such nagging. She prodded him day after day until he was tired to death. That is manipulating. She manipulated him. Did she succeed in the end? She did. He told her the secret, which is, exact, which, which is his hair. She told him, they cut his hair, his strength was gone, and he got into the biggest trouble of his life. Why? Because he gave in to manipulation. Okay? How many of you would say honestly that there is someone, <clears throat> maybe a parent, maybe in law, maybe children, maybe friends, they are manipulating to have some control over your life? I don't know if you know it or not. I don't know if you recognize it or not. But hopefully, after some explanation, okay, that you will discover if you are manipulated by someone or not. And if this is something good or bad, is it okay or it's not okay? And how do you deal with manipulative and controlling people? So let's start by understanding what are the tools that they use okay we'll discuss two tools the first one is threats please write this down threats for example at work manipulative people they love to threaten either directly or you know implied but they do threatening at work if you want to continue to work here you will have to do this you heard that before in relationships if you don't do this I'm leaving you can't continue if you don't tell me I'm hanging up you heard that before if you don't pay more attention to me I'm taking you out of my will <laughs> threats and many other threats you understand what I'm what I'm trying to say some people this is their language their language is full of threats 
And whether you are afraid of this threat or not, when the threat doesn't work, some of them like work on the threats and some of them can switch very quickly to the second one which is guilt. Okay? And guilt is made in Egypt. We are proud to say that this is made back home, okay? And our families are full of that, okay? They have bags and bags and bags of this, and they can pass it on. Manipulative people like to put a lot of guilt in a very nice way, okay? If you love me, you do what I ask you to do. After all what I have done for you, you won't do this one thing for me? You know, it has to have this kind of low attitude, like, you know, meek attitude. Or the silence treatment. Love that one. I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking to you. you Got to figure out why. I thought we were close. Obviously we're not. What is this? Guilt. Making you feel guilty. Or a good one. If you don't do this, you're not a good Christian. A strong one. Or if you don't meet my needs, I'll find another way to get them met. That's a marriage one. Now, many of us in everyday life, we have people that intentionally or most of the time, unintentionally, they do that. Try to relate to us by uh, exerting their desires on our life, by putting pressure, by trying to control. And the question that we want to ask today, and I'm, and I'm going to explain more in the end, is how to break the power of manipulation. You know, especially if these people are older than me, or they, they have done that all through my life. I'm telling you, a lot of people lived all their life in guilt because of a brother, or a sister, or a parent. You know, Jacob and Esau. They were brothers. They were twins. And uh, and uh, um, Samson and Delilah, they were a husband and wife. Okay? Sometimes, or a lot of times, manipulation is right there in, in, in the household, in, in the same household. And it's not good, and it's not right, and it puts a lot of pressure, and it's not Christian. And I'm going to explain that later on. So now the question is how to to break the power of manipulation. First thing here, when I understand, write this down, fill in the space, recognize when someone is trying to control you. You gotta recognize first. You gotta understand. You're gonna make sure, you're gonna say that this is happening. We need to recognize when someone is trying to control. For some people it's very obvious, but for a lot of people it's not. Because the people who put guilt, as I said, they do it in a very nice way. You know? And they make it out of love. Or they say it's out of love. Okay? So it's not easy to find out. You know, I'm sure some of you, after you hear what I talk about, they, you will discover that you were manipulated by someone, and maybe this person is very close. And it's not the best way to have relationship. You know, if manipulation is okay, we would tell you, just continue. As it was, so shall it be. Just go on, you know. Don't make a big fuss out of it. But it's not. It's the worst kind of, of relating to each other. And it doesn't make the relationship good, and it doesn't make it continue. So, we're going to see an example here of actually one of the disciples, Peter, who's 
very strong personality and he was trying to manipulate Jesus believe it or not okay so uh, here it says that Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and that he must be killed and on the third day he be raised to life Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him never Lord he said this shall never happen to you No, that's not the way to do ministry. To die for the people. No, that's not right. It's not right. You cannot do that. And they say that Peter took him aside. Most of the time, manipulation happened on the side. And manipulative people cannot do it on the public. It has to be on the side. Why? Because they have better control on the side that's why it says he took him aside and he tried to tell him no you cannot do that wait a second here does Peter care about Jesus or not sincerely and honestly does he care or not what do you think he does it, it's not that he wants to control him for the sake of controlling him but he does care for him but he thinks that care comes through controlling like a lot of people if you do what I want you to do it's the best for you I love you I do that because I love you yes you love me but you cannot control my life now what we're trying to say here is manipulation listen to this this is the most important part here manipulation doesn't come necessarily because of bad intentions no but most of the time the people who manipulate they do that because they know no other way of relating other than manipulation and control they don't know any better that's the way they've seen in their life they were manipulated they learned manipulation they became expert in that and they continue to do this okay it's not that they mean bad they mean well but they have no clue this is the best way they know I'm saying that because I don't want to look at these people and say these people are bad some of them are don't like don't misunderstand me some of them are, are bad some of them are just looking around to see anyone they can control but that's not a, that's not the majority and that's not what I'm talking about what I'm talking about mainly here is the good nice people it's the nice boss who wants you you know to be promoted very fast and wants you to be successful and at the same time you know he wants his things to be done also how do you know that you are being manipulated how do you know Number one example. When you can't say no to a certain person. When they ask you to do something. When you feel obliged to do something for someone. You know that it's not the right thing to do, but you cannot say no. You have little control over that. Okay? and you can't say no then there is something wrong in the relationship here let's ex exclude some people from this equation you can't say no to your father of confession <laughs> okay <laughs> I was just gonna say a general statement <laughs> and leave the, the exceptions to personal talk I want to say unless he is manipulating you but I don't think that this is the case for most of the cases or most of the time so we don't take this to you know we don't take it to the other extreme what I'm saying is something is wrong something is wrong like you shouldn't do that 
and you don't want to do it but when it comes from this person you can't say no that's manipulation you're being manipulated here okay so that's the first symptom second one the Egyptian one when you always feel guilty around someone you just see the person and you feel guilty for no reason you know some people makes you feel guilty all the time you know what I used to be too kind or kind and easily manipulated believe me I was the easiest person to manipulate and I was manipulated a lot in the ministry in the beginning if you don't come and visit me then you don't love me I used to believe it you know yeah I have to go out of my way to do that but in, later on I discovered that it's manipulation <laughs> you know and now thank God you know I'm immune to guilt it's very hard to make me feel guilty <laughs> to a dangerous point because you have you know we, you have to be treated from that I'll explain later on but feeling guilty especially listen to this if you're coming from a broken family broken family you go to mom dad is upset and you go to dad mom is upset that you spend more time with him and not with me anyone who's coming from a broken family I want to say 90% of the time this person is manipulated one way or another by one at least one of the two parents if not both pressure to control and to have them you know because if you're loyal to that then you're not loyal to me and I'm the weak one and I'm the needy one and I'm this and I'm that and how come when you feel guilty around someone that's not good sometimes it's in the church you know someone is serving and the servant with him or the coordinator or someone like him make him feel guilty all the time all the time that's not right okay unless there is something that I'm guilty about or I feel guilty about which is sin you know sin is the thing that makes me feel guilty and it's from the Holy Spirit the third one is when you feel ultimately responsible want to hear something we are suffering here in America because of you because we came as some parents talking to their kids we're suffering because of you we came here for you and we are suffering because of you well, I'm not responsible for your decisions it's not my responsibility you took this decision it is your responsibility you do it you take responsibility for your actions but I'm not responsible for that some people makes you responsible for every action and every mistake I did this mistake I went into the car accident because of you because you made me upset went and bumped into a car it's your responsibility that is manipulation okay doesn't work this way fourth symptom is when you that's the that's the the worst one of them is when you compromise your values to please others and that summarizes what I'm trying to say is when someone wants you to do something that is wrong that is sin that is against God how many people are pure learn purity all their life they're chased for God and then their boyfriend or girlfriend pushes them to do what they're not supposed to do and what they don't want to do because if you love me you would do that for me that is manipulation is when you compromise your values because someone
as the most, most dangerous one. Okay? And that happens a lot, maybe at work <coughs> or in relationships. The other, so we said the first one that you got to recognize that you are being manipulated. The second one is you have to verbalize it with your actions that this is not going to work on me. Can you say that? This is not going to work on me. This is not going to work on me. You gotta say it. In the past, you mean you know you have been manipulating me, you have been pressuring me, you have been controlling me, but starting now you cannot do this. This is manipulation, this is control, you cannot continue to do that. This is not going to work on me. Let me give you some examples from my life, as I said, in the ministry. I used to feel guilty a lot by so many people. You didn't ask about me. You didn't even notice that I came to church. You didn't even return my email. Good luck, doesn't work with me anymore. Okay, this does not work on me. <laughs> I don't feel guilty. Why? Because I'm doing my best. I never watch TV. I never waste a second in my life. All my life is given to the ministry. But the workload is ten times more than my limitations. I will not feel guilty. And some people come and they're a little bit stronger in manipulation. And I promise you, I say it that way. They say, well, I know why you didn't visit me. Because you care about certain people, or only the rich people. And then I'm supposed to feel guilty. No, I'm sorry, I, just, I was really busy. I promise you, I'm gonna visit you next week. I used to do that, not anymore. Now, the language is like this. You stop right there and it's end of conversation. Get away from me. What? I say this end of conversation. Let's not talk about it. End of conversation. Oh, sorry, this is not what I meant. You're really sorry? Yes, that's not what I meant. You're really sorry? Yes. Okay, let's talk. I know you're busy and everything, but really I want a visit. Okay, sure. You know, I'm a little bit behind in visit, just only six months delay. So hopefully six months from now. Okay, that's great. <laughs> and we become best friends, believe it or not. You know, many manipulative people are my best friends. Because they know that it doesn't work on me. I have zero guilt. And of course, threats. You know, I received threats before. But it was like before uh, having kids. So they said, your life is going to be in danger. No problem. I don't have any kids. You know, my wife is young. She can get remarried if I'm dead. <laughs> Not a problem. Said he's, <laughs> he's crazy. Honestly, I said exactly the same words. So, it doesn't work on me. Try something else. That doesn't mean I'm never manipulated. <laughs> I'm sure I am. You know, my, my, my character, my personality is easy to manipulate. But I understood at a certain time, and it doesn't work on me. And I hope. Really, the, the feeling, the freedom of the guilt is a good feeling. Is a good feeling. Let's see an, an, an example here of what Jesus did with Peter. He did exactly what I did, you know. Jesus turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. If you think I was harsh with people and I said, end of conversation. Jesus told his disciples, you are... Satan. Try this. If it works with you, do it. You know. Get behind me, Satan. 
You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Peter cared for him. But not for the salvation of people. Not for the salvation of the world. Not for God's will. For his will. He loved Jesus, but a harmful love. A harmful love. This is the most important part of what I'm going to say today. The reason why we're talking about this here in a Christian sitting and in the church, not because we want to talk about psychology, not because we want to talk about relationships only, but we really want to do what's pleasing to God. Because every time you allow someone else to control you, you are committing the sin of idolatry. You are worshiping idols. You are putting the will of people before the will of God. And you are pleasing people more than pleasing God. We got to learn to do what is right. Sometimes you need to tell that to your boss. He's not God. He is your boss, but he's not God. You know? Yes, he controls the paycheck. But he doesn't control your life. It doesn't work that way. And if you worshiping idols in that way, you can never do God's will. And if you can never do God's will, that's not good for you. You're away of God's will. And you can never be what God wants you to be. I told you and to a certain point I still do that I have very very difficult job because my boss is God and I gotta please God but at the same time the people that I'm serving they're his children his children and sometimes they're asking me to do things that God doesn't want me to do. Many times before, I rejected doing any engagements or weddings for couples that didn't get premarital counseling. I said, I cannot do that. Can we get married next month? I'm sorry, I can't. You're my children, you're God's children. I love you to death. I know you all your life. But I can't do that. Because I know that if I do that, it's, it's not pleasing to God. Because i got to prepare you for marriage. Because I see how marriages are, are failing because of the lack of preparation. But they're going to be upset at me. And upset at church. And they won't come. I don't know what to do. But i got, I got to do what's right. And i got to please God. And two, as much as I can, I try to do that. Maybe I'm not 100%. But anything that I do without understanding the exact will of God, I may be confused or manipulated. But my goal should be, be pleasing to God and not to men. When you please God, He will please you. He will please you. I promise you, when you do God's will, it's difficult in the beginning. But you feel that you're a free person. I can't explain this. This feeling of being free. Not controlled by anyone or anything. Not having guilt. Having clear conscience with God. It's priceless to have that. Priceless. But when you compromise your values, when you start to please others, you can never have this perfect peace with God that is priceless, as I said. Okay? So number one, recognize the manipulation. Number two, verbalize it. Say, that cannot work. You know, that does not work on me anymore. The third is redefine the relationship. Redefine the relationship. 
we're still friends. We're still family. But this old way cannot continue anymore. Okay? We got to work together. We don't want to put pressure on each other. We want to cooperate, but not control each other. The relationship should be completely different. That's actually what Jesus did with Peter. After the crucifixion, and after the denial of the... When he denied the Lord, when the Lord met him after resurrection, again Jesus said to Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. Peter, let's deal with each other on a new level. You are my disciple, and you do what I want you to do. You did your will before. And you denied me. You did what's right in your mind before. And it destroyed your life. Not anymore. You got to follow me. Then you got to listen to everything I tell you. Let's start a brand new relationship. You might set boundaries with these people. But if you don't keep these boundaries for a while... You lose everything. And you, tr- and, and you start from the beginning. And you got to put up with the manipulation for a little while more. It doesn't work. You got to continue. You got con- to be consistent on that. Redefining the relationship. Some of the, the biggest manipulators in life are kids. Your children. Okay. I don't know if they get it in the, in the milk or what, or you know how the Egyptian blood goes all the way. These kids, they're big manipulators. They control you. If not by tantrums, then by tears. Uh, won't you do this for me? No, honey. <laughs> Doesn't work on me. <laughs> Used to be weak in front of these tears. Not anymore. It doesn't move me a bit because I know they're not real. They're fake. Of course you say, who is this mean person that does not respond to the tears of his children? You know, wait and see. (laughs) But a lot of time it is manipulation. And they're trying to control you to do what they want you to do. No. If you do that, then you don't love them. If you really love them, you gotta say no. You gotta say no. Because you love them, because you care. And you don't respond to manipulation. But they're sick today. That's what I tried, what I mean by consistency. They're sick today. Let's loosen up things a little bit. Manipulations come again and Pharaoh is resurrected from the dead. And they are the biggest manipulators again. And you gotta fight this giant all over again. It doesn't work this way. You gotta be consistent. They're sick. Circumstances. Albi. Have you heard this before? It's the Egyptian way. Older father or mother try to tell their children to do what they want them to do and then the chest pain comes I promise you some some people even call you know emergency and and, and 911 because of this and it is fake (laughs) it is fake it is manipulation I'm not saying everyone is sick is manipulation but I'm saying you gotta discover, you gotta understand. We said the symptoms, so it doesn't work that way with with the with the guilt. A lot of us are raised in that way. I want to tell you, a lot of manipulators, they're innocent people, but they don't know any better. This is what they have seen in their life. If someone loves anyone, then he has to do anything 
for this, for the person he loves. Doesn't work this way. Manipulation raises another generation of manipulators and so on. And it does not stop. Gotta stop somewhere. Someone who loves God and who wants to do God's will and who's able to stand and have and set boundaries say that's it it cannot work like this anymore one last word about manipulators as I said they're not bad people but they are control freak for sure and they depend on themselves more than God and they depend on people more than God that's why they can't believe that other people and, 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 and the closest people to them cannot help them with what they want. They don't have enough faith to trust God. They trust men more than trust God. They trust themselves. If they are not in control, then it's the end of the world. If you are one of them, you got to admit that. And you got to repent on that. Because you're making people guilty. And you're making people feel guilty. You're making people do what they don't want to do. And what God wants them to do. And you're playing God's role, basically. That's what it is. You got to repent on that. And, 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 and got to discover that. If this is the language we use. If I got it from my family, from my friends, got to get rid of this. Because that's not the best way to relate to each other. Jesus came to give us freedom. Even God, God does not manipulate us. Even though he can. Even though he's, he's, he can control us. But he doesn't. He gives us the freedom, gives us the freedom to choose. He gives us the free will to do what 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 I want to do. So, God wants us to be free from any bondage and not to set any bondage on anyone. And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. Let's stand up for prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, I mean, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for setting us free and give us to be the free children of the Lord. Free by choice. Free but we are slaves to you Lord by choice. We want to be your slaves. We want to be your servants. We want to be your children who do your will. And if we be people pleasers we can never be your servants and your children. Give us freedom from any bondage. Give us to fear no one but you. And give us to never feel guilty because of anything except by sin and except by not pleasing you. Give us to have this goal, goal very clear in front of us all the days of our life. Thank you for everyone here. I pray that you set free anyone who's in bondage, anyone who's manipulated or who was manipulated for years and years, to give us the spirit of freedom, the, 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 the love for knowing you and for loving you and for serving you, and you only, that we have no other gods other than you. We thank you for the freedom. We thank you for caring for us. We thank you for living, loving us and showing us the way. We pray this in the name of our Lord, God and Savior, Jesus Christ, through the intercession of our Holy Mother, St. Mary, all in your saints, when we pray thankfully, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come on earth that is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not temptations, but deliver us from evil. 
through Christ Jesus our Lord, pray in the kingdom, the power, the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the love of God the Father, the grace of his only begotten Son, a fellowship, the Holy Spirit be with you all. You may depart in peace. May the peace of God be with you all.